Most people are aware that getting a really good night's sleep on a consistent basis is critically important, but most people don't know how to do that. In fact, I'm guessing that very few of you out there are consistently getting seven to nine hours of really terrific sleep, waking up feeling rested, like you're ready to attack the day, being able to go through the day feeling focused and alert without dips in energy or focus. We're really gonna go tool heavy today and talk about tools that can help you fall asleep, sleep better, and emerge from sleep feeling more rested. Sleep and your wakefulness are the product of kind of the average of a number of different behaviors. But the most powerful thing that's governing when you want to be asleep and when you want to be awake is light. And in particular, it's governed by sunlight. Now, I can't emphasize enough how important and how actionable this relationship is between light and when you want to sleep. Quite simple on the face of it, and it's quite simple to resolve, but people tend to make a big mess of this whole circadian literature, frankly. So let's just break it down from the standpoint of what's going on in your brain and body as you go through one 24-hour day. Let's start with waking. So regardless of how well you slept at night or whether or not you were up all night, most people tend to wake up sometime around when the sun rises. Maybe not right at sunrise, but within an hour or two or maybe three of sunrise. But for most people, we tend to wake up about the time that the sun is rising or so. And as we do that, adenosine levels tend to be low if we've been asleep, and our system generates an internal signal that is in the form of a hormone. When you wake up in the morning, you wake up because a particular hormone called cortisol is released from your adrenal glands. Your adrenal glands sit right above your kidneys and there's a little pulse of cortisol. There's also the pulse of some, and when I say a pulse, I just mean that the release of a little bit. There's also a pulse of epinephrine, which is adrenaline from your adrenals and also in your brain and you feel awake. Now that pulse of cortisol and adrenaline and epinephrine might come from your alarm clock. It might come from you naturally waking up, but it tends to alert your whole system in your body that it's time to increase your heart rate, it's time to start tensing your muscles, it's time to start moving about. It's very important that that cortisol pulse come early in the day, or at least early in your period of wakefulness, and that it happens all at once. It sort of sets a rising tide of cortisol in your system. Now, many of you have probably heard about cortisol in relation to stress, and indeed, as we go through our day and our life, different stressors, different events happen in our life that make us feel more alert. But there's this normal, healthy, rising tide of cortisol that happens early in the day. And I say healthy because it wakes you up. It makes you feel alert. It makes you feel able to move and wanting to move and to go out about your day for work, for exercise, for school, for social relations, etc. So when you wake up in the morning is when that cortisol pulse takes off and something else important happens. A timer is set in your body and in your nervous system that dictates when a different hormone called melatonin, which makes you sleepy, will be secreted from a particular brain region. When you wake up in the morning and you experience that rise in cortisol, there's a timer that starts going, and these are cellular timers, that says to, to your brain and body that in about 12 to 14 hours, a different hormone, this hormone we're calling melatonin, will be released from your pineal gland. So there's two mechanisms here, a wakefulness signal and a sleepiness signal. And the wakefulness signal triggers the onset of the timer for the sleepiness signal. Now that sleepiness signal that we call melatonin that's released from the pineal comes only from the pineal. Unless you're taking exogenous melatonin, you're supplementing with melatonin, the only source of melatonin in your body is going to be this pineal gland. Most people are aware that getting a really good night's sleep on a consistent basis is critically important, but most people don't know how to do that. In fact, I'm guessing that very few of you out there are consistently getting seven to nine hours of really terrific sleep, waking up feeling rested, like you're ready to attack the day, being able to go through the day feeling focused and alert without dips in energy or focus. So we're really gonna go tool heavy today and talk about tools that can help you fall asleep, sleep better, and emerge from sleep feeling more rested. If you are not feeling awake during the day and you're having trouble sleeping, Get the sunlight exposure that we just talked about. But in addition to that, if you want to become an early riser, for instance, and you want to feel more awake during the early part of the day, by getting that light exposure and exercising early in the day, 
you will, after two or three days, you will naturally start to wake up earlier in the day. And that's because these clock mechanisms have shifted. It's like setting the clock earlier as opposed to delaying the clock. And that takes us to a somewhat complicated, but very important aspect to all this, which is what sets the clock and keeps it anchored. The main thing is that bright light early in the day. The other thing is sunset, when the sun is also at low solar angle, low, close to the horizon. By viewing sunlight at that time of day in the evening or afternoon, depending on what time of year it is and where you are in the world, these melanopsin cells, these neurons in your eye, signal the, the central circadian clock that it's the end of the day. And there's a really nice study that was published last year. There was a really nice study that showed that viewing sunlight around the time of sunset doesn't have to be just crossing the horizon, but circa sunset, within an hour or so of sunset, prevents some of the bad effects of light in preventing melatonin release later that same night. So let me repeat this. Viewing light early in the day is key. Viewing light later in the day when the sun is setting or around that time can help protect these mechanisms, your brain and body, against the negative effects of light later in the day. So let me talk about how you would do that. You'd go view the sunset or you would go outside in the late afternoon or evening. Again, if you safely can do that with sunglasses off, you will. You need to wear sunglasses fine, but it will take probably a hundred to a thousand times longer with dark sunglasses than if you take them off. Again, if you want to do this through a window at work, that's fine, but it'll take 50 times longer. So the best thing to do is just to get outside for a few minutes, anywhere from two to 10 minutes, also in the afternoon. Having those two signals arriving to your central clock, your body, your internal world knows when it's morning and knows when it's evening is tremendously powerful. And nowadays, because of screens and artificial light, we have access to light at times of day and night that normally we wouldn't. Now, earlier I said that you need a lot of light, in particular sunlight, to set these clock mechanisms. That's true, but there's a kind of diabolical feature to the way all this works, which is the longer you've been awake, the more sensitive your retina and these cells are to light. So that if you've been awake for 10, 12, 14 hours, it becomes very easy for even a small amount of light coming from a screen or from an over overhead light to trigger the activation of the clock and make you feel like you want to stay up later, make it harder to fall asleep and disrupt your sleep pattern. Okay. So the simple way to think about this is you want as much light as is safely possible early in the day, morning and throughout the day, including blue light. So take those blue blockers off during the day, unless you have a real issue with screen light sensitivity and you want as little light coming into your eyes, artificial or sunlight after say 8 p.m. And certainly you do not want to get bright light exposure to your eyes between 11 p.m. and 4 a.m. And our lifestyle nowadays and being up late looking at phones, even if you dim that screen, you're triggering this activation because your retinal sensitivity and the sensitivity of these neurons has gone up late in the day. Now, I'm not here to dictate what you should or shouldn't do, but for those of you that are experiencing challenges with mood, those of you that have anxiety, learning problems, issues focusing, the questions I usually get are, how can I focus better? Well, we will get to that. But one of the best ways you can support your mechanisms for good mood, mental health, learning, focus, metabolism, et cetera, is to take control of this light exposure behavior at night and not get much or any bright light exposure in the middle of the night. Red light won't trigger this pathway, but very few people have the kind of infrared lights that are set up or floor lights. And that brings me to an important point, which is about the location of light. If you want to avoid improper activation of these neurons, it's better to place lights that you use in the evening low in your physical environment. So on desktops or even the floor, as opposed to overhead lights. So overhead fluorescent lights would be the worst. That would be the worst case scenario. Lights that are overhead that are a little bit softer of the sort of yellow or reddish tints would be slightly better, but dim lights that are set low in the room are going to be best because they aren't going to activate these neurons and therefore shift your circadian clock. <laughs>